Hello, my name is Brian. Welcome to my first ever pen review video. Today we're going to be looking at the Twisby Swipe, brand new pen from Twisby. Um, and I'll be doing a review and unboxing of it so you can see what it's all about. And I know it's already unboxed, but we're going to go back in time to when I have not unboxed it yet. <laughs> so you can uh, see my first reactions um, and see it along with me. Um, but before we do that, I just want to say um, I plan to do more videos, uh, but most of my videos will probably be a little different. Um, I, most of my videos will probably be about pens I've been using for a very long time, so you can see the kind of longevity that different pens have. So for example, I've had some Twisby Ecos for a really long time. I'm planning to do a review showing you how they've held up over time. Do they actually have cracking issues or not? Um, that sort of thing. If that interests you, go ahead and subscribe. I also am currently prototyping some of my own pen products. So if you're, if you're interested uh, to see some handmade pen accessories that I'll eventually be selling on Etsy or something, go wait till I, um, then stick around. Uh, it might take me a little bit to get that going, but um, I'm excited to share that with you guys if this channel takes off. So please subscribe and share and um, yeah. All right, so let's get into the review. Okay, let's get started. So we're in the past now. I have not seen this pen yet. So let's get it out and take a look. Um, but first I want to point out, I bought this from Lemur Inc. Um, they were listed on Twisby's website as a authorized dealer. And I got it from them because they do free shipping over $20, which is awesome. Um, as much as I love Goulet pens for their legendary service, sometimes I just don't really want to pay for shipping. So um, yeah, uh, free shipping over $20 is uh, pretty good. Um, but with that said, this isn't a promoted thing in any way. I just wanted to get this pen and do a review. So I bought it and let's open it up. Okay, nicely packaged there. Looks good. Okay, here we go. Looks like nice handwritten note there. And oh, a sticker. I love stickers. Um, as you can see here, this is the notebook I'm currently using. It's just plastered. So, um, yeah, stickers are awesome. Thank you, Lemur Inc. Um, but we're not here for the stickers, we're here for the pen. Um, so one thing uh, you'll notice right away is that, um, well, if you're familiar with Twisbees, this is a very different kind of packaging setup than most Twisbees. Um, it's a very different thing from their usual like plain cardboard. I like the plain cardboard a lot, but this is a an interesting, change and I wonder if they are I feel like there are certain things about this pen that are trying to make a statement a little bit like um, I think they're trying to say look we've made a lot of nice pens but this pen is different this is something unique um, and exciting so that's what I get from the packaging there um, and we'll talk about the pen too a little bit um, as far as I, I feel like um, Twisby's just doing some really interesting things. Let's take these little tabs off here. Okay. All right, so you just got this plastic sleeve. It's pretty, pretty sturdy little case. And you open it up and you got a bunch of stuff in there. Let's see. So we've got a little bag with Wow. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> a spring, a cartridge, and a converter. Um, now, I watched uh, Drew from Goulet Pens. He did a, a good video to kind of introduce this pen. And he talked about how big these are. And so I knew they were going to be bigger than what I was used to. But, man, they are big. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I was really ready to 
or prepared to see just how big these are. Um, for comparison, I actually brought my only other standard international pen because um, the Twisby Swipe is a standard international setup. My only other one, though, is the Twisby. Wow, not Twisby. The Jinhao Shark. Um, so just for comparison, I've got just kind of a generic standard international converter, the Jinhao converter, and this one. <laughs> It's so huge. Um, so one thing I'm actually really curious about is to see, uh, are they swappable? Um, Twisby, I think, is trying to make a more universal pen. And so, uh, but I'm not sure how universal it's going to be if everything is twice as big. Um, but I'm okay with it. The, the size, I mean, that's a great ink capacity. That's really exciting, actually. And one thing that I'm so, I think is so cool, so Drew from Goulet Pens, again, he pointed out that, that this is a double-walled seal here, and he didn't mention it, but, oops, there we go. Does that look familiar? If you have a Twisby Eco or any of their piston fill pens, that's going to look really familiar. It is just a mini Twisby piston inside a converter. I think that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, pretty fun there. And there's a little agitator ball, clear plastic agitator. That's nice because um, sometimes the metal ones get really loud, so I don't think this one will be quite as loud. Um, I don't know if it needs an agitator, though, because it's huge. The ink should have plenty of room to swish around in there. But but it's there, that's a little bit stiff, but actually pretty pretty smooth. That's a lot smoother than most converters I have. Um, and I really like the look of it a lot, actually. It's got a really sleek look. Um, I wasn't super sure about the look of the spring-loaded converter that comes in the pen, which is why I actually got the opaque blue Russian blue version. Um, wow, that is pretty. <laughs> um, it's funny, when I first saw the first images of this pen, I was like, I mean, cool, but it just kind of looks like a glorified like uniball or something, just like some kind of cheap, high-tech looking pen or something. But that's actually really pretty. I feel like they did a really good job and we're really intentional about the design. But I don't know about the spring. <laughs> Seeing that spring in there. Oh man, that's a really nice, very secure click. Um, I've heard that with the Twisby Go, sometimes the click is a little bit too stiff. Maybe it's one of those things where you love it or hate it. I don't have a Twisby Go, I just have a couple of Twisby Ecos but that's a very secure click. And you've got a nice, I don't think you can see it, but you've got a nice inner cap in there. So it should seal really well, just like most other Twisby pens. And then here we've got um, a pretty familiar, goodness, will you focus please? There we go. You've got a pretty familiar Twisby nib right there. I think, let me get my one of my egos here. Yeah, I've heard that they're interchangeable. They, yeah, they look to be about the same size. Um, and I got this one in extra fine because I have an eco in fine and an eco in medium. So I wanted to see what the extra fine is all about. Uh, another thing, if you're familiar with the Go, you might notice that the, um, again, I don't have a Go, but the grip section, I think, is pretty much the same, um, except that it's much clearer. The other, the, the Go has a more translucent look. This is completely clear, crystal clear. It looks really pretty, actually. So let's uh, unscrew this thing and look at this converter here. First of all, I have to say, yeah, it's a plasticky pen. I was worried that it would feel really cheap 
but it doesn't. It feels really good. Um, it feels very smooth as I'm screwing and unscrewing. Um, also, I guess I should show you, this was surprising to me. It is a, what is that? A Pentagon, I guess, five sides. So um, I didn't expect that. Um, I saw that there was like a facet with the logo on it and I expected it to be kind of like a Lamy Safari, how it's kind of flat on the top and bottom, but it has five facets. So that's kind of fun. That goes along with the Twisby brand a little bit, having facets of some, some kind on their pens. Um, okay, here is the spring. Whoa, I'll, get, I'll, I'll figure this out, guys. I'm sorry, it's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, my first review, so go easy on me. But yeah, so here's the converter. Whew, again, it is just massive. Um, and so I got the spring there. It's pretty stiff, but I guess that's a good thing because it's not gonna go out on you anytime soon. Um, let's see here. And it fits pretty securely. I was worried about um, how securely it would go in there because of some of the videos I've seen, um, especially Again, I'm gonna bring up Drew from Goulet Pens again. Um, <laughs> if you haven't seen this video, you should go watch it. He like projectile launched his converter straight out of the pen. So careful when you're loading it with ink that you don't create an ink rocket. Um, I'm not gonna demonstrate that for you, but um, it is possible to have the spring get away from you. So yeah, I think that that's, that pretty much covers the pen. Um, I forgot to get my ink out, so let me pause this really quick and I'll get some ink to show you. Okay, so what I've got here is some Mont Blanc Mystery Black. It's actually the first ink I ever bought and I had no idea what I was doing. So I actually don't use this ink very much because I tend to go toward inks that have some amount of water resistance. They don't have to be bulletproof or anything, but I just like to know that if I'm going to be writing uh, and there's some moisture or something, I'm not going to completely lose what I write. But this ink is like the least water resistant ink I have. <laughs> so I would rather use, you know, like a like Noodler's Black or something like that. But it is a pretty black and it is very well behaved, which is why I'm going to be using it. It's a very, I feel like it's a very middle of the road ink as far as uh, wetness, dryness, all that kind of stuff. It behaves pretty much perfectly in any pen I put it in. So I feel like it writes true to size. So you'll get a good feel for what, um, what the extra fine uh, Twisby swipe looks like when we do a writing sample here in a second. Okay. So let's see how this works here. This angle might be weird if you're watching this, but we'll do the best we can. Okay, so I'm just gonna push this down, back up. Okay, I don't think I'm getting anything in there because the ink is too low. Let's try again. There we go. All right, so I did three pumps. I don't know if that was necessary. Um, I've got a pretty full fill. I mean, there's still a lot of room in there. Um, the capacity is still definitely bigger than any other standard international converter pen. Um, let's give it a couple more pumps and just see what happens. Maybe I need to do it faster. Maybe it's like the the Pilot Con 70, I have to do it kind of quick. Okay, yeah, I got a little bit more that time. Let's see, sorry. I will get oriented with this camera set up here for too long. Um, yeah, so that's pretty full. Um, and in a video demonstration, they showed just filling the converter and then putting it in the pen. I think it's weird when people do that, but maybe you'd get a more full fill that way. I don't know. Um, but 
it's a full enough fill for me. That ink's going to last a long time. Um, so let's screw this back on here. Okay. Oh man, it's going to have that same problem that the Lamy Safari has where the logo just like ends up on the bottom if you don't screw it on right. Let's see if I can figure that out. It's just a pet peeve of mine. I don't know if it really matters. Let's see. Oh, maybe that's just how it goes. Okay. The logo is just going to stay on the bottom. Uh, no big deal. All right. Um, oh, let's uh, let's see how this posts. Um, okay, posts very securely. Kind of reminds me of how Alami Safari posts. It's just plastic on plastic, but it's very secure. It's not going anywhere. And wow, they um, really fixed the top-heavy issue that the the Twisby Eco has. That's not top-heavy at all. Actually, I would say that's probably one of the least top-heavy pens I own. Less top-heavy than a Pilot Metropolitan um, and some other entry-level pens I have. So, yeah, that's awesome. I'm. I was kind of planning to write with it unposted, but I'm just going to leave it right there. And let's pull out this notebook. Actually, let's put this ink away. That would be a good idea, huh? Okay. I don't really know what you would like me to write. I just do the quick brown fox kind of thing. But if you have any suggestions for things you like to see in writing samples, then let me know. Um, all right. Let's see. Do some print first. Okay. I would apologize for my handwriting, but in a video I really liked that Brian Goulet did, he said, don't apologize for your handwriting, so I'm not going to apologize. Um, yeah, so that's print. Let's see if I can do some cursive. I'm a little bit, I'm a little rusty, but uh, let's see. That wasn't cursive. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Well. Okay, so it seems to write... I mean, it's definitely not the finest extra fine out there. Um, and actually, I think it may have the issue that some pens have where the fine and extra fine really aren't all that different. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, but it is fine enough. I mean, it's um, definitely going to let you write small. Um, yeah, so I like it. It's definitely a stiff nib. You can feel that stiffness. Um, but it's comfortable in the hand. It's very comfortable. Um, like I said, it's not back weighted at all. It feels very natural. Um, yeah, so I think as far as that stuff goes, it's good. Um, might just take me a little bit of getting used to because the feedback, it's actually pretty smooth. It's not really grabbing the page. You can hear the feedback, I'm sure. Um, but it's smooth, but there is maybe just a little bit more friction. So it kind of slows you down just a little bit um, compared to the fine or the medium, but, um, but pleasant. It's pleasant to write with. Um, I think that this will be a, a consistent uh, pen in my rotation. So there you go. I think that that just about covers it. Okay, let's do a couple other quick things I just remembered. Um, first thing, let's see here. First thing is I wanted to give you some uh, size comparisons. I totally forgot about that. 
So here is one of my Twisby Ecos and the Twisby Swipe. So let's see. The Twisby Eco, well, they're really close. I think the Twisby Eco is like maybe a millimeter longer. Um, the cap is a little bit longer on the Twisby Eco. Let's look at the grip sections here. Okay, so it looks like the, the swipe has a longer grip section by a little bit. And it doesn't have these threads here. Um, there's a little bit of a step there, but it's not very noticeable. And it's a pretty generous grip section, so I don't think you'll have any problems there. And then the only other thing I think I missed, I want to make sure I do, whoa, ink everywhere. Okay. I want to show you, uh, or I want to test and see if a standard, standard international converter can fit in this pen. I don't know why you would want to do that <laughs> because you've got this giant thing and you can buy them separately. So if you break it or lose it, you can get a new one, but just for funsies, let's uh, try that out. So I haven't cleaned this or anything, um, but I did empty it. So let's try just a regular standard international converter in here and see what happens. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's very loose. Um, not just because of everything happening around here, but the place where it would fit on is not, not tight at all. Let's try the Jinhao one really quick. Let's see, oh, it's like even worse. Okay, well, so <laughs> there you have it. They have created a standard international cartridge pen that might not work with other standard international stuff. So it still feels kind of proprietary to me. I'm not complaining because they provided you with really awesome stuff um, that I think kind of outshines your typical um, converters. So I it doesn't matter to me, but I think the marketing is a little odd <laughs> that they would say like, oh yeah, this is a standard international pen when it doesn't actually fit. And then just for kicks, I don't think this is going to fit in here, but let's just try it. Oh, yeah, not going to work. So maybe if you have a really wide pen, it'll work, but you probably have a hard time finding a standard international pen that would fit this. So I'm a little confused about why they are marketing this as a standard international pen. I kind of thought that this was their entry into kind of the more uh, mainstream uh, pen market, trying, kind of trying out doing things like other manufacturers, but it's still pretty different. Um, and again, I like what they're doing. I don't have any complaints about it, but I do worry about a lot of people being like, Ooh, let me get one of these sweet spring-loaded converters for my favorite pen, and it's just not going to work. So I feel like the marketing is a little bit misleading. It would be nice to get a little more clarity on that. But again, um, this is a nice pen. It feels really nice. It writes well. And it has a massive ink capacity, which shouldn't surprise me because it's a Twisby. So I think that just about covers it. Let me know if you have any questions, post some comments, uh, let me know if I missed anything, any information you'd like me to add, or things you'd like me to change for my next review. Um, and uh, again, please subscribe. I have some fun stuff coming down the line for you. And yeah, hope to see you next time. Bye.